Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to AI for Good. I'm Chris Bachman presenting AI for Good Perspectives. All year, always online. So AI for Good is a year round digital platform where AI innovators and problem owners learn, build and connect to identify practical AI solutions to advance the UN Sustainable Development Goals. AI for Good Perspectives offers expert insights, global visions and shared solutions from the AI for Good community. And that's why today I'm delighted to bring you two ladies. One of them is Natasha Marangu, Blockchain Product Manager for Energy Transition at Shell, and Mirim Rislanova, Senior Delivery Lead for Traceability at Energy Web. Hello to both of you. Hello. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having us. So, Natasha, you start first. No, it's a long title. What do you do? Hi, thanks for having me here today, Chris, first of all. Um, product manager at Shell. I'm part of a, a small blockchain team at Shell, a dedicated team under our innovation R&D branch that is tasked with accelerating the adoption of blockchain technology at Shell and the wider energy industry. And an example of that is traceability of the origin of green energy, which is, of course, what we're talking about today. Great. And Miriam, a little bit about um, Energy Web. Um, yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, hi, everyone. I have the pleasure today to represent Energy Web Foundation, uh, a nonprofit developing publicly accessible blockchain tools for the energy sector. Uh, I'm personally responsible for uh, helping energy players like Shell and our other members implement the software solutions within the specific use case of renewable energy traceability and help build applications running on the blockchain. Okay, well, why don't we start with you then? So tell me, you know, we know a lot about blockchains, but in the energy system, you know, what's the, what's the role and um, has it reached maturity? This was a, a core question. What is the role of blockchain in the energy system five years ago when we just created our foundation? And at the time, we analyzed over 150 use cases. Out of those, um, there were two major ones where we strongly believe uh, blockchain brings additional value. Uh, one is integrating distributed energy resources like batteries, uh, your solar panels, EVs, uh, into the grid, and renewable energy traceability. So within the traceability, blockchain is great because um, it enables verifiable tracking of energy uh, at the entire life cycle and includes these different stakeholders that today don't really have a shared data platform. So this is why within the traceability domain, blockchain is actually reaching its maturity. Great. So at Shell, what does the blockchain mean for you? And you as well, I guess, is absolutely essential in terms of maturity. Uh, thanks for this. Indeed, our blockchain team also exists since 2017. We also started looking very broadly around possible use cases that we could bring within the energy industry. Our focus now is really on supply chains and the energy transition, where we really see blockchain technology as this neutral industry-wide infrastructure that can enable trusted and seamless exchange of information between supply chain parties. Now, if we look at blockchain technology, uh, specifically in the energy transition, um, we think there's two ways uh, we can accelerate that. And that I think uh, reflects also a little bit what Miriam referred to earlier. Um, first of all, we can make it possible to track sustainable energy and certificates from their origin through every stage and transaction. So we can provide an additional layer of certainty and trust to our customers that the electricity or the hydrogen they're purchasing is really actually from renewable sources. Uh, the second way that we think uh, blockchain can play a role in the energy transition, in addition to being a source of trust, is that it's got the potential to transform the way that parties interact across the value chain. And we are moving now to a system where we see um, a lot more decentralized energy resources coming, connecting to the grid. Blockchain is one of those technologies we think that can bring a more direct engagement between energy producers or consumers now and consumers. Great, Miriam, um, if you can take over and tell us as well, and what's the link with Shell? Yeah, sure. Just to build on top of what Nataza has mentioned, um, we at Energy Web um, 
truly believe and we're convinced that decentralized tech like blockchain um, is really fit for the job to <clears throat> incorporate all these millions and millions and millions of devices that we're seeing enter uh, the energy sector, as well as different users, and have this trust this uh, audit trail to incentivize clean energy consumption and reward this type of behavior. Uh, when it comes to the link with Shell, um, Shell has been a long-standing partner uh, with the Four Energy Web um, for since, since at the very beginning, basically. And we, um, as a core of our mission, we really depend on the power of crowd innovation, where Shell is taking a really active uh, participation too. So, for example, for this specific project on uh, renewable energy traceability, we used uh, an already existing tool that we were, we've been working before and cooperated with Shell to build on top and uh, bring the solution into life. Thank you. So, um... Maybe you can pick up here, um, Natasha. Mm -hmm. What's important as we talk about renewable, as we talk about the environmental impact, um, is the proof of concept. Uh, great question. What we see today is that um, energy consumers are starting to consider the environmental impact of their electricity consumption, many of them pledging to be 100% renewable. Now, under the current uh, system, the way companies can do that is look at their consumption on a monthly or even an annual basis and buy the equivalent number of green certificates. But this does not guarantee that there is enough green electricity at the exact times when these companies consume energy. So there's two major implications from this kind of, of setup. One is that uh, this doesn't provide an accurate carbon footprint of the company. The second big implication of this temporal mismatch is that there's no accurate price signals for clean energy producers. So at Shell, we're convinced that the current system should and will evolve eventually to address this by moving towards car granularity. And we want to be able to help our customers prepare for this future. And by providing insights to our customers about their true electricity consumption at any moment, this proof of concept helps to start a conversation on how to achieve real decarbonization. So um, Miriam, tell me a little bit about um, what you're doing. And um, again, your side as well, and how you get into the proof of concept or what we call POC. Um, all right. Um... So recognizing this growing need for 24-7 renewable energy tracking and matching, Energy Web and Shell partner together in this first proof of concept um, to test the technical and business feasibility of, the, of blockchain in the 24-7 use case. And I'm going to be referring to 24-7 a lot, so let's establish that. 24-7 uh, means uh, tracking renewable energy on a granular level. So in this first proof of concept, um, we decided to include several participants in the Netherlands uh, to build a digital platform running on the blockchain or energy web uh, uh, chain uh, that includes five uh, major steps. First one is registration of uh, generators and consumers and anchoring their identities on the blockchain. Second is actually collecting the consumption and generation data and for, the, for this proof of concept, we used uh, historical data for three months. Uh, once the data was actually collected, uh, we stamped it uh, with, the, uh, with the origin information and attributes and uh, have this audit trail on the blockchain to ensure that we can track the entire life cycle of every energy unit here. After this step, there is a matching of consumption and generation. And for this proof of concept, we use the 30 minute interval, which was the minimum interval available for, um, for the use case. And after the matching, uh, all the users of the platform were able to see their performance and specifically for energy consumers, they, they are able to see how green they are around the clock. Uh, they're also able to see at what times they're not using green energy and instead are relying on the grid or the gray energy. Uh, because this is a proof of concept, we had to start with, uh, um, with a small scope. And uh, because this use case is quite niche and new, uh, there are no established regulations for the 24-7 renewable energy tracking. Therefore, the platform itself does not have an integration with the, um, with the established tracking systems. 
However, this would definitely be one of the focuses uh, in the further stages. I would like to jump into a quick demo of the most important parts of the proof of concept. So I won't be showing everything, but rather the most important functionalities when it comes to the consumer or the, en like the energy user. So right now we're looking at the login page uh, where we can input our, our uh, credentials as a consumer. And let's imagine that we are a large industrial company with a factory in the Netherlands, and we have access to this type of a tool. So when we come to uh, this view, what we're seeing at the top is information about our factory, uh, the, the, the meter number, the address where it's located, who the supplier is, and in this case, it's Shell Energy. And the more interesting information here is what is the target for us when it comes to uh, sourcing carbon-free energy um, per 30 minutes? So in our case, it's a little over than 4,000 uh, kilowatt hours. Another important piece of information is what are the favorite generators in our generation mix? So uh, where from do we want to? Where do we want to source the energy from? Uh, and in the case of uh, uh, consumer S, uh, we have three solar farms and a wind farm as our preferred generation assets. Um, here in to, to mention here that uh, we have used um, real production data for these uh, proof of concepts. This is not dummy data, but it is, of course, anonymized. So the information you see here is actually not, uh, not uh, the, the, the actual uh, reality in terms of addresses, etc. Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, addition, Natasa. Thanks. Um, and for example, uh, for the proof of concept, we assume that the consumer chose uh, solar panels that are closest to their factory for the highest efficiency. And that's what uh, guided the choice for the preferred assets. Um, so to understand how green we are around the clock, we can also change the time frame here. Uh, as I mentioned before, for the POC, we actually used um, three months, so starting from April and uh, finishing in June. But um, for now, let's look at one day at a time to understand what was happening with our consumption. So to do that, we're looking at the consumer profile uh, in this part of the page. And uh, what this essentially shows us is what is our consumption in total per 30 minutes on the 1st May of 2021? And uh, what, uh, uh, where the consumption is coming from? So gray bars indicate the grid or gray electricity mix. Uh, the blue one is from wind farm and uh, the shades of orange are from the solar panels. And uh, uh, as expected, at night and in the early hours of the day, there is no solar, there is no sun, so hence there is no solar generation. And the majority of the energy is coming from the grid. So it, we are using gray electricity uh, whose origin we cannot trace. Then when, once the sun uh, is rising, we're, we're seeing um, inclusion of the solar energy. And in this case, for example, the majority is coming from the solar farm M. Um, and again, uh, towards the end of the day, we're seeing again the pattern repeat with the uh, grid and wind energy being more prevalent. And here on the horizontal line, we see our target. Uh, so how much green energy or carbon-free energy we want to source per 30 minutes. And you see that quite a few uh, uh, times in the day we're actually not meeting this target. Now, if we wanted to look at a bigger time frame. So let's say we want to look at, a, in, at one month. Um, we, we see the pattern pretty much uh, appearing here, where during the days we have the peaks of solar energy, uh, specifically from Solar Farm M, and closer to the night we have, uh, we have wind farm coming in. And uh, we also see the pattern of us using more uh, grid energy as compared to uh, the carbon-free energy. Um, and I know this view seems a little bit congested because there's a lot of data uh, points uh, on this graph. So we can actually um, increase the interval to daily to see how, how the performance uh, looks on the daily interval. Uh, so when we look back 
at the um, at the right hand side of the tool, we're also seeing the summary um, performance for the month. And uh, what we see here is that 63% uh, of our energy is actually coming from the grid. Uh, and uh, the rest, um, so 21% from the wind farm, 11% from solar farm M, and 6% from the other two solar farms. And we can see the statistics for our entire energy consumption underneath. Um, so what can you do with this information? Why does it even matter? So with a tool like that, you're really able to dissect where the energy is coming from and you, you're, you're seeing a more accurate uh, carbon footprint of your energy consumption. So you really know what is the shade of your energy consumption. That's one. Two, you can actually act on this information. So for instance, if we look at uh, the daily pattern here, we see that um, there's a lot more uh, a reliance on the grid in the uh, later times of the day. So maybe it makes sense to, to uh, throw in another generation asset into the mix, for example, like a biomass producer. It might make sense to invest in a storage facility. And so with this type of information, you, you as an energy consumer can act and uh, be more sustainable, not just on paper, but in the reality. Thanks, Miriam. Uh, and because it's AI for good in the ITU, the crucial question is, this is all open sourcing? The underlying technology used for the proof of concept um, relies on a toolkit that's publicly available. So any company interested in the 24-7 uh, toolkit can use it, build on top of it, um, and couple it with other tools like AI. Uh, the blockchain itself also public. So over to you, Natasha. Um, you know, you've just seen from that experiment we saw on screen. Um, tell me about the collaboration and, of course, what AI has to play in all this. Sure. Uh, thanks. That's, a, that's an excellent question. Uh, what comes next for us um, is uh, finding a customer that wants to pilot with us so that we can get to the next stages of this um, solution. And with a big focus on data automation, data integration, and uh, synchronization actually with, uh, with the wider energy system. We're looking also at the option of certifying the origin of green hydrogen production on the blockchain using this same solution. Um, and your question on uh, AI and how can that actually now complement what we're doing, I think that's an excellent question because what we've done so far is really a very small first step to provide those trusted insights. Now that we know, we can act on those insights. And I think this is where AI can really uh, play a very important role. Um, on the consumption side, I think we could uh, see us using AI to identify those structural gaps in the temporal mismatch to inform procurement strategies or enable or activate, if you will, demand load shifting, et cetera. But also on the supply side, we can use AI to inform decisions on how to get to 100% green energy for better temporal spatial matching. Um, where do we build what assets, what clean energy types to be able to deliver the energy where it's needed at the time it's needed, but also looking at the wider energy system level, AI will allow us to better integrate and utilize decentralized energy resources, optimizing grid balance and services, dispatching surplus to storage, just to name a few of the opportunities. So really ultimately here is about energy optimization and orchestration at large scale. Um, and that's where uh, blockchain can really benefit from AI to provide that optimization. Great. So Natasha Marangu, the blockchain product manager over at Shell and Miriam Rislanova with Energy Web, both of you talking about blockchains, AI, and how it can help with the energy transition, and of course, the UN's goals of getting towards the Sustainable Development Goals, and of course, open sourcing for all this. Early days, fascinating discussion. We'll hear much more about this, of course, in the coming months. So I'm Chris Bachman. Thank you for that interesting discussion. Stay tuned. We have much more from AI for Good all year, and of course, always online. See you soon.